Okay, welcome to this video everyone. So in this video we'll be learning about what's known as the Argand diagram. Okay, so let's have a look. So in earlier videos we've been looking at complex numbers and some properties and we've been considering them algebraically. Now, we can represent complex numbers geometrically by considering them, by considering them as ordered pairs. Okay, so what do I mean by an ordered pair? Well, if we have a look at the complex number z, which equals x plus iy, we can think of this as a point on a regular Cartesian plane. And we think of it as the point x, y. So this is an ordered pair. So the x coordinate corresponds to the real part of the complex number, and the y coordinate corresponds to the imaginary part of the complex number. Okay, and this uh, Cartesian plane that we consider it to be lying on it has a special name, it's called the Argand Diagram. It's named after uh, mathematician Argand, J. Argand. Okay, so what does it look like? So we have these two axes here. So we have our usual y-axis, we call the imaginary axis, so this is the imaginary part of Z, because remember the y-coordinate, that represents the imaginary part of Z. And we have the same thing for the x-axis, it's called the real part of Z. Okay, so if we have a point x plus iy, and here I've just taken it to be in the first quadrant, but of course it could be in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrant, it doesn't matter. But this is this is, is without loss of generality, so that's fine, we can consider it here. Now, we can think of this as a vector from the origin to the point P. So this vector, I might write here, is written like this, OP with an arrow above it to represent it as a vector. So this is the vector from O to P. Okay, so we can think of a vector, and the vector has two properties. It has a length, and it has uh, a direction. Right, so now let's try and work out what the length of Z is, or the length of the vector is. Right, so if we just look at this triangle here, this goes across x units and goes up y units, right? It's fairly simple. And we can use uh, Pythagoras' theorem and see that if we call the length r, so therefore r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, all right? That's a simple trick. And therefore r is the square root of x, plus I, uh, x squared plus y squared. And we're left with r, which is which we write as the modulus of z. So these are sort of like absolute value signs, but they're not really absolute value signs. There are, it's a way of just denoting, it's notation. This uh, means the modulus of z. And what we mean by modulus, it's just the length of a vector, right? And that's equal to x squared plus y squared. Now, an important property to note here, if you remember back to a few videos ago, we looked at um, z times z bar, and that was equal to x squared plus y squared. So therefore, we can say that z times z bar is equal to the modulus of z all squared. Okay, and that always holds. Right, so now we've, we've defined the modulus, which is the length of the vector. Now we need to uh, define the, the second property, which is the direction of the vector. Right, so we call this angle here theta. So this angle is called the argument of z. Uh, the argument of z, which we work out as tan inverse of y over x, right? And that just comes from considering tan of theta, which would be the opposite over the adjacent, so y over x. And so theta is the inverse tan of that. We call that the argument. And the principal argument, which we define as minus pi, uh, is less than theta, is less than or equal to pi. So the reason this uh, is not less than or equal to here is because pi and minus pi is the same thing. Okay. So let's have a look at some further stuff here. So now we get into the modulus argument form of a complex number. So I've just drawn this diagram again. So once again, we have r, which is the length of the complex number, length of the vector, which represents the complex number. And we have theta, which defines the direction of the complex number. 
and this theta is always the angle that the vector makes with the positive real axis, right? So the argument is always the angle that the vector makes with the positive real axis. So if we had uh, theta being negative, that means we'd be going down like this, so in this direction. Okay, now we can once again look at this and consider just a simple trigonometry, right? So we have x equals uh, r cos theta. So if we looked at cos theta here, we'd get adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be x over r, uh, x over r, and so from that we can get x equals r cos theta. And similarly, we can get y equal to r sine theta. So these are the polar coordinates of this complex number. You can think of it as a parametric representation. Okay, so if x is r cos theta and y is r sine theta, and we know that the complex number is x plus i y, then we can have z as r cos theta plus i r sine theta. And this is known as mod modulus argument form. Now we can factor out the i, the r, sorry. We can factor out the r and we get r into cos theta plus i sine theta. So r here is the modulus of the vector or the modulus of the complex number and again you can write it as the modulus of z with these in this form so that's just notation and theta is the argument or the principal argument so when you see a capital A that uh, means it's the principal argument of z if it's just a lowercase a then it's just any angle right and remember the principal argument is in between minus pi and pi and sometimes you might see this written as r cis theta and that's just uh, for simplicity, we can write C from the cos and I sign as IS. And that's just, you know, for note, that's just a, another notation here. Now, another thing that's uh, important to note is when theta is plus or minus pi on 2, then we get our complex number as a purely imaginary complex number. Remember, a purely imaginary complex number is one that doesn't have a real part. Well, actually, it does have a real part, but the real part is equal to zero. Right, so if theta is plus or minus pi on 2, we can consider it as living on the imaginary axis. So it's only here, right? So the angle goes pi on 2 or minus pi on 2 all the way down here, and we're living on this imaginary axis. We can see a similar thing when theta is uh, zero or pi, then our complex number is purely real. Right, so if it's purely real, then we're back to our real numbers. And we can see on this axis, if theta is zero, then we have all these positive real numbers. And if theta, um, theta is equal to pi, then we have our negative real numbers. So this here is our regular real number line, and this is the imaginary number line. Together they form the uh, Argand diagram. All right, so in future videos we'll be seeing how to convert numbers, uh, complex numbers from Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, which is this x plus i y, to the modulus argument form and vice versa. So I hope you enjoyed the video.